And when we say MLA, MLA actually is Modern Language Association. That's where the M, the L, and the A come from, Modern Language Association. Okay, so, um, and when we say MLA, did you put this in MLA? We actually mean MLA style. The style sort of maybe dictated isn't the right word, but arbitrated, um, arrived at by the Modern Language Association. And that style, I'll be very straight with you, is used predominantly in the academe or academia, in K through 12, in colleges, in the education setting, formal education setting, and in publications about education or inst institutions of education. So um, that's where it's predominantly used. It's not used a whole ton outside of that. And I think that's worth taking into consideration. I don't think anyone should memorize MLA style for two different reasons. One is you're probably not gonna use those exact m details elsewhere as well, they change. They change with us and with how things are published. MLA from the, if you go far enough back, there probably pretty much was a, a format for an academic journal, newspaper, a magazine, and a book, print. And then the internet came and you know we added this and this and this, and now it's continually changing. As well, if you don't like something, the way that MLA does it, write them a letter. Some of this stuff, there's a rationalization, right? Or a rationale, I should say, or we can s rationalize ourselves in reverse and say, why would they do this? But to a degree, it's arbitrary. Um, and you can write them a letter if you want it to change. You don't just have to take it, all right? So, um, but, so the, a lot of other publication and writing is done in other styles. It's still useful to do the exercise of learning to put something in MLA from a couple standpoints. One is the fundamentals and purposes are the same across really any style. Um, there are little differences and those differences have a lot to do with where they're published. But getting used to meeting a style will help you meet any style because of the similarities and also because of just the practice of meeting those expectations. So MLA again will change in the future as things change in, t how, in terms of how we publish and how we educate and the sort of media that we use in it. And then um, it also helps you if you have to publish an APA in the future, which is used more in scientific research and it's uh, American Psychological Association. So um, obviously it's used in psychology, but it's also used in a lot of other scientific research and many publications, as well as a lot of academic publications that are not centered on uh, education use APA or a modified APA. Um, and then there's Chicago style that's historically used in history, a lot historically used in history, um, but it's also used in general publication. Most books, it's the most universal style, um, and probably the most different. APA and MLA have some differences and I wanna just point out a couple of those. So, um, or at least one of them, APA fronts the date. The date will show up in text because a lot of times it's scientific research, they wanna make sure that date is there so that you know how timely is this research and instantly be able to frame that. As well, it's a little bit of a clunkier style in terms of the text. It's a less elegant style. Um, if you're looking at beautiful prose, because it's more apparent. If you have three or four different studies that support a particular issue, or, or uh, you might have a string of citations in there, which MLA might try to reduce that a little bit and get a little bit out of the way, but that information is still in the document in the works cited page. So um, they're a little bit, the nuances are a little different um, for the purposes of the style. And then there's also AP style, which is different than APA, and that's usually used in journalism. Um, and then there are other styles that are used for different situations, and then you, they change over time, and publica individual publications can modify them. In your workplace, there might be expectations that sort of model or you can see parallels. There, In general, writing situations have outside expectations that are put on us and understanding why those are expectations will help us to do well, as well as flex them when it's appropriate to do so and go our own way and have it make sense. And uh, so that's part of our practice with MLA. It's not that we're gonna use MLA always, but 
we'll use some type, we'll have to apply some type of outside expectations. And this is a, a way to practice that. And then as well, it's first year writing and your other courses in your baccalaureate will most likely apply MLA or that's the most likely source. And they may even give you options and you'll have MLA. So um, it's useful in the short run for that purpose. 